This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with traffic so you can expose your Docker containers to the internet in a secure manner. So if you're not aware what traffic does, this is a pretty good visual representation of how it works. So if you're kind of like a visual learner like me, this will be a pretty good image. So as you can see, the way traffic works is that you will set up domain names, right? So as you can see in the top left, you've got api.domain.com. So if someone goes to hit that domain name, that will be set up in your domain register, you know, wherever your domain's registered to point to your server that's hosting traffic. They will hit traffic and then traffic will know, hey look, it has these labels like on your containers and it will go, okay, I'm, I'm getting a request from api.domain.com and it hits traffic and traffic goes, cool, what container has that label? the api.domain.com. Oh, okay, it's this container over here. Cool, send the request there. And that just means that, you know, it makes it so easy to expose your services to the web and you can have a whole bunch of services and everything's just been managed by traffic. And traffic is a reverse proxy and this is what and how that works. You have domain names set up, you associate those domain names to containers via labels. I'm gonna show you all of this. And then once you have that set up, that domain name will come through, hit traffic, go to your service. So let's see how this actually works. So I'm gonna assume you're aware on just how you can stand up containers using like Docker Compose and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna show you what's going on. So on the screen here, what you can see is that I have a web server, right? Running on the left-hand side here. And the domain name that that is is test.electron.xyz. Now, the, the joke that it's got here, ChatGPT made this, so that joke, I have no idea what it's about, but oh well. Anyway, there's an Nginx web server up and running, and this has all been run and exposed via traffic. So I have a, on the right hand side here is where my, um, I, is my sandbox virtual machine that's running traffic and the Nginx server that you see on the left hand side. So if we have a look at the compose file for the server, let me just make this full screen. You'll see there's a few things different to what you're used to when you're spinning up a container. So everything from up here is pretty standard, right? We have a Nginx container. So the service is called Nginx-test. And the image we're using is just a general Nginx image. Now you expose that, you hit it on port 80, you would see Nginx, right? But what we've got here is some labels. And these labels are specific for traffic. Now I'm gonna go into more detail when I walk you through. So there's two halves of this, right? First half, let's just have a look at how traffic works. Second half, I'm gonna show you how you can deploy all of this step by step. All of this is documented in my docs.tickdocs.nz webpage. You can find that in the link in the description or take you through the entire process we're gonna cover in this video. But for now, let's just do a bit of a high level view. So we have labels here. This label here is saying, hey look, this container here can use traffic. Without that, traffic wouldn't use this container and this container wouldn't use traffic and it just wouldn't be able to expose. And I'll show you what happens when we change that in a second. We have another rule here. So you can see how there's a role name called Nginx. You see this across all of them. This is specific to the service. Now, if I had another service, I could change that to, well, I would have to, I'd change that to, um, you know, if I was doing WordPress, I would I'll call this rule WordPress. And then you would have that everywhere as well. And this rule here is saying, hey, look, anything that comes over on the test.electron.xyz domain name, it's going to hit this container. This container is associated with that domain name, okay? And then we have entry points. Now entry points are like, you know, are you gonna come over port 80 or are you gonna come over port 443? And it's pretty self-explanatory here. Web secure is HTTPS, so port 443. These entry points are configured in the traffic uh, YAML file. I'll show you that in a second. I'm just trying to keep it high level for now. We have TLS, you know, uh, HTTPS, we're gonna have TLS, so that's true. And then we also have certificates and traffic has let's encrypt inbuilt. You don't have to worry about configuring Let's Encrypt. You have a YAML file that tells, you know, traffic the configuration you want. We're telling YAML we want a cert resolver called My Resolver. You can call that name whatever you want. But mine's called My Resolver and that's going to use Let's Encrypt, right? And that's going to generate certificates for you. Awesome, right? And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. I have a volume. This is just where the HTML files live for my web server. That's got all the, the, the front page uh, image that you've seen. We have a network. 
So any of the services that I'm going to want um, traffic to manage, they're going to be on the traffic network, right? So traffic can talk to the container and you know, they're all on the same network and they can talk to each other. Without that, you're not going to get much communication going on. And we've just got this one here saying networks traffic external true because this network is external to these and I have to just tell it, hey, look, this network exists already. Please use it. So that's what's happening there. Again, all of this is explained in the documentation and I'm going to use the documentation in the second half of this video. So that's, that's how that works. So if I save this, and that's what you're seeing here on the left hand side and it's the same container now if i change under this directory and i go to traffic and and then i do a nano docker compose you can see here traffic is set up just as a, a container as per usual as well it's on that same network it's just got a few more specifics configured and again second half of this video i'm going to cover all of this on the deployment but you can just see from a high level view, that's how this is configured. We're telling traffic that we've got a config file for it to use, which is the traffic.yaml. Traffic is using port 80 and 443. And 443 is what you're going to use for most of your services, right? And since we're running this locally, you need to make sure that those ports are port forwarded on your home network. Otherwise, you know, nothing's really going to be able to work. When when that domain name, uh, my domain names are in Cloudflare, when someone hits that and it tries to hit your home server, and you don't have them forwarded, you know, not going to get much, right? So make sure port 80 and 443 are uh, port forwarded. Now, even if you're not going to use port 80, like HTTP services, um, you're still going to need port 80 open and port forwarded. The reason for that is because Let's Encrypt uses port 80 to grab and validate its certificates, okay? So that needs to be open. Now, the volumes here, so traffic needs to talk to the Docker socket so it can actually interact and manage your containers, right? So that's very important. We're giving that a traffic.yaml file and it's going to go into the container just so traffic can utilize that YAML file, the configuration. There's another file called acme.json. Now, don't worry too much about this. We're going to create this file, but then traffic just manages it for us because that's where it stores all of the Let's Encrypt keys, like all the certificates. It all will just go in there. We will create an empty file. Traffic then utilizes it. And then again, we've got that network. So uh, traffic's on that network. So any of our services will also be on that network so traffic can use it. So I'll just show you, I'll go back to that Nginx container. And I just want to quickly show you that label. So if I go uh, into here and go nano docker compose. So let's say I got rid of this line and save that, right? I have a I have a specific setting in my traffic configuration where I'm saying, hey, look, I need this flag. If it doesn't, it can't be used by traffic. So now I've got that there. I'm going to restart this container. So we'll do a docker compose up hyphen D. It's going to rebuild that container. I'm going to hit refresh here. See, look at that. It's down. That container was managed by traffic, but now I've commented out that line saying, hey, look, you know, traffic is enabled true. Um, it's no longer been able to use uh, by traffic, but you know, uncomment that, uh, rebuild the container, come over here. It does take a couple of seconds, but let's see. There we go. It's back up again. I just hit refresh. You can see now traffic is using and managing that container again. And just before we get into the build, I know I've been talking here, but I, I really just want to help explain, you know, how this really works. Uh, let's go back into the traffic, clear the screen. And we'll do an ls and I'll show you the files. So there's the acme.json file. It will have some certificate information in there. We have the docker compose I just showed you. And then we have the traffic configurations. This is just a configuration for traffic itself. So we have some entry points. So when we, like I was showing you on the container, we it was using the web secure entry point. So that's saying, hey, look, any traffic coming into this container is over 443. We have our certificate resolver, which is let's encrypt. And we've just called our uh, Let's Encrypt Resolver, My Resolver. And it's looking for a storage location for the ACME. And we're just saying, you know, Let's Encrypt needs um, an email address for the certificates to be registered under. So you would put an email address here. And then you have the storage where all of this information is stored. And then you have an HTTP challenge where, the, um, where Let's Encrypt verifies the domain ownership. Now, if this is all like, you're sitting there like, what are you talking about? This is all too much. 
I have documentation here. So on the left hand side here, this is my documentation. Everything I am talking about right now is all in here. Okay, it's all it's all explained, you know, to create a network, the ports, um, the sample files, everything I'm covering in this video is all here. So if I'm talking too fast and you just need to take a moment, sit down and have a read here or join the Discord, link is in the description where you can jump in and ask questions if you get a bit stuck. So what we're going to do now is actually go through the deployment on how you can get this all set up. As self hosters, we're always looking for new things to learn and that's where today's video sponsor comes in, Brilliant. Now Brilliant have thousands of interactive lessons ranging from AI, maths, data analysis and programming. Now if you're like me, I'm a very much a interactive like a visual learner. If I, I can't just sit in a lecture room and have someone talk to me, I'll just zone out, right? It's proven to be six times more effective to actually be hands-on and interactive, and that's what Brilliant offer. All of their courses, everything you're learning, you know, it could be programming, you know, learning Python, it's all hands-on. The, the great thing I like about it, it keeps me consistent, you know, that you can set up times that, you know, oh, I might want to work, do a bit of an hour's worth of uh, training here, or, you know, 30 minutes, just when Whenever you have time, it's a good replacement for that like Instagram and Twitter doom scrolling, right? You can replace it with something like Brilliant and just continue your learning with something like Python, which is what I'm currently learning at the moment. Brilliant is actually helping me learn Python in a different way where everything I'm learning, I'm actually able to apply it to problem solving and that's just a way better way of learning uh, for me personally. So if you're interested in today's sponsor Brilliant, I have a link in the description which is brilliant.org forward slash tech docs and that will give you 20% off a premium uh, annual subscription. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. Thank you so much to Brilliant for uh, sponsoring today's video and thank you so much for checking them out. Okay, now let's actually go through the steps of deploying traffic. So if I give a refresh here, you'll see Everything's down. I've removed traffic and the web server is down. So let's start from scratch following the documentation on getting traffic set up. So we have an empty directory here. So this is what you should do. So create, I don't know how you file, uh, manage your Docker containers, but I like to have like a directory called Docker and then in there I will have a folder for every uh, container I have uh, with the composed file and stuff inside. So I've created a folder called traffic. Now if we jump to my documentation, again, a link is in the description, you'll see we have the composed file here. So what all we need to do is copy this compose file and we jump back over to our server and we'll do a nano docker-compose.yaml, paste that in. And again, we've already gone over this here. So we've got, again, the image, we've got the configuration file, the ports and the volumes. All of this is the same as what I discussed before. If you're keen to read more about it, check out the, uh, the docs where I just copied this from and you know we explain more in there. So we can save this file, right? But you notice that we need to have this traffic and this acme.json file. We need to make sure these are there, but we'll just close down here. Go back to the documentation and we'll scroll down. Now we need to create that network, right? That traffic network. Let me zoom in a bit for you. So we'll copy this command, go back, paste this in and hit enter. I'm trying to make the documentation as easy for you to follow as possible so that, you know, what I've got up and running, you, as long as you follow these commands, you should be good to go. So we need to have a traffic.yaml file. So let's make that. So nano traffic.yaml. And we'll copy this in. So we'll paste that in there. And now you can see we've got the entry points, web address 80, web secure address 443. And we have our resolver. Again, mine's just going to be called my resolver. And we're going to put an email address in here. So let's just put that in. There we go. And this is going to save all the keys, like the certificates, in that acme.json file. And then, like I discussed before, we've got that HTTP challenge. So that's there. And then I would like to have this provided as, you know, exposed by default false. So we have to specifically expose the container with that label. So I'm going to save that and close out of there. Scroll down. And the next step is to create that acme.json file. Super simple, it's gonna be empty to start off with, so we just copy this, come over here, paste that in. And now if I do an ls, we can see we have all three files. Now the chmod 600 is just making sure that this acme.json file can only be accessed by the owner of the file, right? No one else can actually access this file because it actually has our certificate information in it, um, hence why we're changing that permissions there. So we have all three of these files set up. So what we can do now, it's just do a docker compose 
up hyphen D. And now our traffic is up and running, right? So if we do a Docker PS, well, actually, we can do Docker compose logs hyphen F. We can see it's all up and running now. Great. So now let's actually expose a Nginx service uh, to use this, right? So in my one here, in the um, documentation, I've got an example that you can set up. You just have to make sure you set your domain name in here that you're going to use. Uh, so, but I'm going to use the one that I was using before. So if I change directory, change the Nginx, and then go nano docker compose in here. What's happening here, again, like I mentioned before, we have that domain name that I'm going to use, which is the test.electron.xyz. Uh, it's using the web secure. So the entry point, the web secure, which is 443, the TLS, and yeah, that's all that we're using. And it's on the same network. This is pretty important that you make sure that your a service that's using traffic is actually on the traffic network so they can talk. So now, I come back here and I go back to this test. If I hit refresh, you see, nothing's working. You know, I'm getting invalid SSL certificate. You know, nothing's actually stood up. This container isn't up and running. So if I do a Docker compose up hyphen D, hit enter, our service is now up and running. If I hit refresh, it might take a couple of seconds for this to come up. There we go. Our service is now up and running, just like that. And if I wanted to do another one, let's just do change directory dot dot dot. And we do nano docker compose dot yaml enter and we use the one from the documentation he set in video dot electron dot xyz right save that jump to cloudflare and we'll add a new record for it eh? video dot electron dot xyz now i need to put my public ip address in here and then i'll save it Right, so I've just added my IP address in there now, so it's pointing to video. So now what I can do is, again, just make sure that that's there, and that is all good. Cool, so video.electron.xyz. We can do now a docker compose up hyphen D. That container is now up and running, and now let's see if we can connect to it. So video.electron.xyz, enter. Now I purposely made a mistake here, uh, and you'll see, you see nothing's coming up. Why is that? Now, if we come back to a compose file, remember this has to be unique. We've already got a rule using that Nginx, right? So we have to give it something else. So we'll call this one Nginx test, right? Because I already have a service using that. So we need to make sure these are unique. So we'll save that. We'll spin this container back up again. So we'll rebuild it. There we go. Now, if we jump back, give it a refresh. There we go. Now we have video.electron.xyz up and running, right? So if you get issues with service nodes, like your second service not coming up, make sure you're using those unique label names, okay? Uh, as you've seen there, when I had it the same, it wasn't coming up, I was getting an issue. And you'll see here, I actually checked that out. So see this log here? It says, hey look, they're routed, def routed defined multiple times with different configurations, right? It was complaining, you're using <laughs> that Nginx a name for more than one service it, it doesn't work but that is setting up traffic now i know that there's a lot to cover and i know it can be a bit but it's just follow that documentation bit by bit and just take it slow and i'm sure you'll you'll figure it out now jump into the discord if you do get stuck i'm more than happy to help you i am personally still learning traffic as well I know that this is pure bare entry. You can do some crazy things with traffic and rever reverse proxies, but this is just getting it set up with, you know, HTTPS and serve some uh, Nginx web servers and that, or WordPress or whatever you wanted to use. It's the same sort of process. I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. The, the channel growth has been crazy lately. Uh, the last video has been doing amazing. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Goodbye.